Welcome to another episode of Into Final Thoughts. Before we jump into it, I want to tell you to check out our official partner of this season of Into Final Space, Cartoon Crave. Cartoon Crave is an incredible network and news source for all things animation, including Final Space. To learn more, check them out on Instagram at cartooncrave underscore and at the Cartoon Crave on Twitter. Now, let's get into the episode. Did you miss us? Because we sure did miss you. Welcome back to the finale trio of Into Final Thoughts. In case you've forgotten in these past few months, my name is Gabe Jones. Uh, my partner on these episodes is here with me. Olin! Hey, how's it going? Here, oh. live from <laughs> LA, Olin Rogers and Gabe Jones! Need a clapping track. <laughs> <laughs> And if you are tuning in for the very first time, Into Final Thoughts on the Into Final Space podcast has been going over each and every episode of Final Space Season 3. So if you've not caught up yet, make sure you go back and listen to the last 10 episodes. And so Final Space Season 3 has concluded. Uh, we let you guys tune into those episodes without us. And now we're back to talk about everything that's happened, starting with Episode 11, The Dead Speak. Uh, now, if you're watching and listening to these things one by one, uh, we don't want to spoil anything, you know, if you're trying to go through the episodes and listen to us right after, we're going to try to keep our discussions mostly to this episode and this episode only. Uh, also, make sure you tune into the past outro, because, or tune in past the outro, uh, because we'll be welcoming our very first guest, June, to Into Final Lingering Thoughts, where they'll be asking Olin some questions about Final Space. So, for now, let's get right into it. Uh, this episode's kickoff was absolutely insane. We get David Tennant's massive performance as the Lord Commander's Titan form, facing off and beating Bolo, uh, who at this point has been pretty much our most powerful ally. So let's talk about both. Uh, first thing, uh, the decision to, uh, to to lose Bolo here in episode 11. Yeah, you know, that's always a, a tough one. Um, and I don't even know where, where, when that decision came about or who came up with that decision. It's been so long in that process. I just remember it being at the end of 10. And <laughs> if we had episodes of like, you know, 25 minutes or 30 minutes, it probably would have made way sense. Because I think that, <laughs> that original animatic of episode 10 was like, I think it was close to 30 minutes and it was awesome. Oh my God. It was so cool. And then you're like, you, you're faced with the daunting task of like, guess what? You got to get it down to 21 minutes. You know, like, and it's like, <laughs> why, why? Like it can't be 21. Oh five. Like, no, you got to get it at 21 minutes. That yeah. is, you know, linear TV. That's the guidelines. And that's the, the one of benefits to having a, you know, a streamer. If it was, if, if you had a show that lived on a streamer, you can bring in a show at, 21 30 or, yeah. or 22 blah 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 you know like there is no guidelines in streamers um but here in this little format you got to come in at 21 minutes and so we felt like having that at the end of basically 310 it was too much of a it was too much you know and it was, it's like too much chocolate you know, you get to the end of it and you, you have all this crazy stuff. And then if you were to see Bolo get his head, head ripped off and then you're like, whoa, what? And then you end <laughs> on that. It would have been cool, but it would have been like none of those moments were like going to land. Yeah. And then I think it was like Ben had the idea of like, dude, just save that for the top of the next episode. Um, or it, maybe it was day. I don't know who it was. It, it was somebody in the production that was like, what if we just moved it, you know? And so it became kind of like the cold part of the cold open. And that's such like a hard thing to, to write because this is when the, when the moment we moved it to three eleven was the moment, you know, you really started to feel the budget constraints, yeah. you know? And so we had, you know, you know, the basically it, it, it boarded in a certain way. And, you know, you you try to get it as the coolest you can look, you know, and you start really feeling the, the, the models and the animation when it's come, when it comes to these big guys, it's like, 
you got to imagine these guys have been animating a show for almost six to eight months now (laughs) and they're getting to 11 and like, when will there be a break? You know? So they just came off like a really big episode. And I think when they, when they got to this one, it was even, it was supposed to be a bottle episode and Mm -hmm. it really isn't a bottle episode at all. You have this zombie attack um, or these Invictus possessed Gary's or whatever they are. Um, But I think with this opening, uh, I think it, I, you know, I think I, I remember talking to David and he's like, you know, it might not go over well with people or, you know, they might not like it or, but David was like, look, I would rather have the ending of tin land as opposed to, um, and have like, you know, people, some people not okay with the bolo thing than the other way around yeah. where it's like, we got the bolo thing, but that, but the moments aren't landing in the episode. I'm like, yeah, I got, I can see that. So I think with that moment, you know, I love Keith David and look, I always say this about Keith. He has, he's, he's a legend. I always tell him every time I record with him, I'm like, dude, you're a legend. You know, I tell it every single time and he'll tell us stories about Hollywood and like old school Hollywood back when he was driving in New York and stuff. And it's like, like you're like, dude, this guy lived a really crazy life. <laughs> <laughs> and I will always like, you know, cast that guy in this, in something like he, he always uh, knew the assignment. He came in, he crushed it. And um, his voice is just like butter, man. It, it is, it is absolutely one of the best voices in, in voice acting. And you always know when he comes in, it's just like, you know who it is and you don't mind it. Like here's Keith David, he crushes it <laughs> and everything he says, he can make a bad line sound awesome, you know, and he can make a good line sound even better. That's Keith. You know, he's just, he's amazing. Um, so it's always sucky when you have to like, you know, write a story where you're like, yo, we can't, we don't have the budget a to continue Bolo for the next two episodes. And so we have to, we have to kind of, you know, sadly let Bolo go in, in this fashion and try to make something that's it. You don't have the money to do a fight scene. You know, sure. you don't have the money to continue them for the next two episodes. So what's, what can you do? You got to go the shocking route. Yeah. And that's the quickest, most efficient way to do it um, and budget friendly, you know. And so it wasn't, you know, it was part budget. It was part, you know, just story. But it was like that's that's kind of like where Bolo met his uh, his end. And it kind of, you know, it worked in a way that, you know, you saw how powerful the Lord Commander is now, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it really kind of was like if you're like, oh, my God, he just killed Bolo, our most best ally the strongest ally you know and now we're kind of screwed in this final space without anybody to help us yeah that's kind of a cool feeling to have i always love you know like in like lord of the rings or you know the matrix or any kind of like big epic thing where the bad guys are always outnumbered that they're always kind of they always keep giving like uh the worst hand but they keep pushing forward you know that's kind of like I really love that stuff. And I love in this moment, you know, they came together and they just kept going forward even after that. Like they, it's like you had to, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's, it's definitely a sad moment. <laughs> I always look the, the funny thing is with me, I always fast forward over that moment because I don't want to see Bolo die. <laughs> it's uh yeah it was, it was, it was a real shock right there at the beginning. Um, and also, yeah, like you said, just to see, uh, Lord Commander's Titan form, uh, just, just yeah, right there at the beginning. What was it life like to uh, bring bring him to life in production? That was really cool. That was a fun process. Um, and you know, it was the the great thing is sometimes like you get some really cool stuff in the boards. And I remember Alan, who was our assistant director, uh, to Ben on on all of his episodes. He came up with this awesome design. And I remember we were getting designs back and it was like, it just wasn't scary enough. It wasn't like, it it didn't look, it looked like very cartoony. It looked very um, not threatening. And then Alan was like, dude, give me, give me a few days. I can come up with something. And he brought something in. We're like, dude, yes, that let's do that. That's amazing. And we really leaned into his, into his kind of board design of it. And then came up with a design off of his thing. It was, so he really kind of, you know, that was all him, 
it was a kind of an Allen, I think Ben collab with Devo. Like it was like, they really crushed what, it. I, <laughs> what I a team who, right there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who did the actual character design of it. So forgive me, but somebody else as well, <laughs> you know? So, um, but yeah, it's definitely, um, it was definitely a cool moment to kind of see something that, you know, we kind of teased that season yeah. one to kind of finally come to fruition in this, in this way. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's your, your production dream team, right there. You got Alan, Ben and Devo on it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, th- and those guys have really, they've been there since, you know, season yeah. one. Yeah. You know? They're all excellent. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny that, uh, it's, it's just seeing the growth out of all those guys. Yeah. It's, it's really cool to see. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, now we got Bolo gone. It's another really massive hit to the team and keep dealing bad cards. Uh, leaves a lot of hopelessness and causes some rifts that we see in this episode. Specifically, we have uh, Avocado and Quinn split off together in, in this episode. And uh, Avocado blames Quinn for getting them stuck here. Uh, but I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, how could he say all this for all the things that he's done? Uh, what were some of your, your thoughts on this Avocado Quinn dynamic in this episode? You know, it's like there's always a, a lot of different ways you can, you know, write a scene. And, and I think I, at least from what I can glean, you know, I feel like the feeling behind of that is you got to think about like in real life, you know, a yeah. lot of people that have their own stuff going on always project yeah, and kind of Absolutely. make to make themselves feel better. You know what I mean? And to me, that's what avocado was trying to do was like, you know, I know I, I I'm messed up, but you know, I'm going to project it onto somebody else. Yeah. And it just went on to Quinn, you know? And the thing is like, I've, I've seen this even in personal experiences where if you have a, a woman at the lead of, you know, anything the like the leader of any kind of anything, I mean, talking about a construction restaurant, whatever it is, they always get crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and for whatever reason, it, it always is like that. And it felt like a cool moment to kind of, you know, spotlight the reality that, you know, for whatever reason, <laughs> it's, it's, it's that, you know, because Gary, he messes up all the time, yeah. you know, and it's like <laughs> avocado is totally fine with it. Like, what does that even does it make no dang sense? So yeah. it's it's one of those things that, you know, I think Quinn always overcomes harder obstacles. Yeah. And she does. And that's what I think makes her, you know, a really good character. And I think that uh, she doesn't she doesn't just accept what Avocado's dishing. You know, she throws it right back in his face. And I think the only time that she really sits there and starts to think about her you know, decision of like, what did I do the right thing was when she finds out that everybody has this sickness. And she's like. Yeah this isn't right. You know, like we, we, we need to focus on getting these people, you know, healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, and we get that, that big reveal that yes, everyone does have the final space poisoning. And then we were all wondering when we saw Gary reveal his, uh, and you know, that, that means we're, we're running out of time. What, uh, I, well, I can imagine that that budget, uh, probably is the answer to this question, but what inspired that, uh, that sense of extra urgency for you guys to give everybody the poisoning and, you know, really, put this this heavy weight on everybody yeah you know it's um i think this was kind of like a you know this was kind of something where i think it just adds a really like it was always kind of part of the plan where they got into the final space and uh you know they end up all getting this thing and i and i i really like that idea of um of doing that i think that the the part where the budget really came into, you know, uh, play was at the very end of three thirteen. Yeah, where you're like, okay, there's there's a possibility where this might not continue. You can't just leave these guys with final space poisoning. Just have it fade away. <laughs> you know, like you know, just have it fade away. Just a, so it's like it's you know, at least they're not double dying. <laughs> you know, like. So I think that uh, you always have to kind of think about that um, to the best of your ability, and it, and it's definitely one of those things that uh, a lot of the a lot of the story points that we really wanted to kind of craft and um, really push that extra mile kind of got adjusted, you know, yeah. in yeah. these last three episodes because there was actually a really meaningful thing going to happen 
do the final space poisoning. <laughs> and uh, I had written it, man. I, I wrote the the finale, like before even the, the, the season three started. Like I knew where I wanted to end it. I knew what I wanted to do with little Kato. I knew that I wanted it to be uh, this rescue mission, you know, yeah. but I wanted it to be a, like, you know, they get to the end and you don't know if these guys are coming back. Yeah. I love that idea. I love the idea of a personal mission and you got this really emotional goodbye with Quinn in the same way that you got in season one, you know, it's, it was like, there was so much more emotion. Is this, like, don't don't tell too much. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> at the same time, it's like, you know, I do have the radio play and I don't, I want people to watch, yeah. um, watch it for what it is now, because a lot of the times when you feel like that there's something that it could have been, then they come in with a negative viewpoint already. So I just wanted, I just want the people internationally to enjoy it before yeah. I kind of rip open that bandaid, you know? Yeah. Well, and, uh, and uh, we got to save some fun for, for our last episode of yeah, it's Lingo, true. Or our final yeah. thoughts. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this, I, I, I like this episode a lot. Uh, it's a spectacular episode with some, you know, very just classic horror rooted zombie invasion. I, I really enjoyed that aspect. Um, I know you're, you're a big fan of, of popular culture and movie and television. What were some of your, your inspirations uh, on, on this one? Yeah. You know, I think this is like the classic, um, you know, horror vibe kind of, you know, episode. And, you know, we always kind of have like one episode kind of like this in, in each season, but um, I know that David really wanted to do a zombie attacks, the ship kind of episode. And I knew that uh, this was a really hard episode to do like really hard because every time we did a pass on the animatic, it was like, we can't do it financially, you know? And so we had to start thinking about, okay, well, you're going to see less and less zombies or less and less Invictus possessed Gary's. And and in a way you had to get really creative where it's just flashes or like there was all these different things and tricks that they had to implement. And Juan did an amazing job of like leading that team and directing it in a way that actually made it possible because it was, there was so many times where we're like, can't do it. Can't do it. There's too many, too many, can't do it. Can't do it. This was like probably the one that we went back and forth on the most because we had the story, we written it out. And it doesn't mean that like a lot of people think that once you write a script, like, Oh, it's just going to happen. You know, no, (laughs) you gotta, you gotta, you gotta survive the notes passes, you know, cause there's always notes. That's something that David told me is always notes. You got to get notes from the, the, uh, the, your producers. So in this time it was Conoco new form. And then you send it to, you know, TBS, you get notes from them. You come back to it, you address the notes, you do another round of the thing, you know, you send it to them. Basically you do send the draft back. They give another round of notes and it keeps going back and forth on every script, you know? And so with this, it was kind of, you know, a moment where this episode 12 and 13 and the the crazy thing is i'll say around this time like we i remember in the first five episodes we literally had no executives like like the executive that we had went to hbo max Mm -hmm. and in these those first five we were just kind of like what do we do like (laughs) like like, we don't have any notes that's great and all but it actually throws off the production yeah. Because you because you don't know who to send it to. We had no contact with anybody at the network for like Gosh. a while, man. We were in production before. Finally, we got two new executives at TBS, Campbell and Lauren, which are great, you know. And they came in at a really awkward time where we were like halfway done <laughs> the season. And so it's like, how do you give notes on that? Like, like it was just, it was very strange. Yeah. Okay? But essentially they came on and they started giving notes towards the end of the, you know, kind of the middle point, you know, I would say probably around six, six on. And, you know, they gave, uh, they give some good notes. And, and I think that um, a lot of the times the note pass is kind of like to, to, if there's like a story point or something that bumps people like that, it's kind of like your net to kind of catch stuff. And a lot of the times, you know, you started to really, I think we started to really feel that, you know, people just were going through it at different times. <laughs> so it's like a lot of stuff, you know, you have to be extra cautious about what is working and what's not working. And, you know, in this episode in particular, there's a lot of story beats that are happening. 
know, you get the, you get the multiple earths, you get the Titans in the, in the core, you get the, you know, basically the undead Gary that awakes you and he tells all this information. Then you get the, you know, it's like, there's so many things happening in this episode. It's actually a really kind of big episode. Yeah. Um, and so I think with this kind of thing, the best thing that you could hope for is just to try to get something that works on every level. And I think that in the animation side of it, you're having to constantly make these course corrects. And we had to, we had to rewrite 11, uh, kind of not, not a lot in 11, 11 had, it, it was kind of like, we just basically tweaked the hyper transdimensional bridge looking for that. And the Quinn storyline kind of her motivations and everything had changed. I'd have to look back at it. It's been so long. Yeah. I haven't looked at that original script, but what I do know is that they were looking for the Kevin net, not the hyper transdimensional bridge. So Okay. It was definitely a uh, different story. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we discussed that uh, after this episode in, in Lingering Thoughts, so you should definitely listen to that. Um, and yeah, so so moving through that a little bit, uh, nice uh, Easter egg here in this episode. We get uh, the gift shop with uh, some nods to existing Final Space merch. And yeah. uh, I think I asked I asked uh, Rachel on Twitter, and I think she said yes, but uh, would, would Star Cadet hire Biscuit? I don't know. <laughs> he's, kind of, he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> Biscuit episode two, I would. Biscuit like episode four. Like this is like the biggest like back and forth uh, between David and me is I really liked Biscuit being this like, you know, purring kind of, you know, a little bit rambunctious kind yeah. of, uh, you know, kind of guy. You know, he had a lot of energy. And then David really liked the biscuit with an attitude. Yeah. But, but I kept telling him like, David, that doesn't make any sense. We, he was a, you, we wanted like the, the writers in the room had this joke where they had watched all of Gary's video logs and biscuit was a big fan. It's like, that doesn't make any sense to that, <laughs> to that story point. If he's like just this jerk and he starts hating, you know, Gary, it's like, you got to do a gradual progression of it. But he just felt like Biscuit needed an extra turn of the screw, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, for whatever it is, it, it works for the most part. But well, I'll, um, I'll be honest with you. I, I think I saw more of, uh, and this is my next question anyway, a uh, solidification of uh, him being some people's favorites more towards the end of the season. When I think when he oh, yeah. got a little yeah. snappier. Yeah, towards the, towards the end. Absolutely. Like, like basically when... There was like a weird, like, if you really look at Biscuit, you'll see the evolution of like trying to find that character. And that is always a thing in even season one. By the end of it, you found you finally found the characters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and and you every new character by the by the beginning of it, you haven't found it exactly yet. The, the voice actors are still learning the character. Yeah. By the end of it, they got it. Right. And I think with Biscuit, the beginning of it we were still trying to find that character. Like what was the perfect, you know, balance of like jerk biscuit to cute biscuit to purring biscuit. Like what was the, what was that balance? And I think that at the beginning, it was a little bit too, too much, too cute, you know, kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> and then, and then I think, you know, David really put that course correct where it made it kind of too much of a jerk, you know? Mm. And then I think towards the end, found you, get this, you get this really nice thing where he's like kind of in the middle, you know, yeah. he does, you know, kind of funny things. Like I, I really love the, uh, it was an improv thing, but the thing with the bees, man, I was like, <laughs> I was in the yeah. booth. I was sweating my freaking face off, man. Cause I was, I had my, I had to build a booth yeah, in my office <laughs> and you have to turn off all the AC. It's the middle of summer. Yep. I am drenched in sweat. And at this point I'm like, I'm just going to do it all at once. <laughs> so I, literally, <laughs> I did that scene all at like an actual, like back and forth. And, uh, I was just, I don't even know what I was saying. I was talking about bees and I'm like, maybe I can put that, get the bees, you know? And at the end I was like, I'm just done. <laughs> I'm just I'm like he's just running off and and uh yeah, I just like wrapped it up and sent it. I was just like so hot, man. I was about to pass yeah. out. So yeah. I think with uh I think towards the end, Biscuit really came like he was he was kind of in that I think sweet spot, you know. Um, but yeah, he I think towards the middle, I I don't really like Biscuit in the middle, but towards the end. You like him because he's like he fixed Hugh's body, you know, he gave yeah, Gary the dragon hawk, you know, like 
he's helping people left and right. He's hangry, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the right spot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we go from, from that, you know, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of laughs, uh, but uh, I want to dive a little bit into uh, the on Invictus possessed uh, Gary zombie uh, talking to Quinn. And I, I, just had to commend your performance there. Uh, that was incredible. But uh, what was recording that like and, you know, writing that scene and that kind of exchange between the two of them? Uh, wait, say that again. The the Gary zombie unpossessed by Invictus and uh, and your performance chatting with, or Gary's performance chatting with Quinn. Oh, yeah. You know, that was, that was actually a David idea. Um, he had this idea of bringing a Gary out of that to hear this kind of conversation. I remember recording it and it was kind of like, you know, how do I make this Gary different, you know? And, and I really tried to put as much sadness and vulnerability into that performance as I, as I could, you know? And, and I remember, I remember for the, for a while, David was like, should we re-record this? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, why? It's a good, I think it's pretty good. You know, like, I think it's a good performance. He's like, well, yeah, you know, like he just, yeah, I don't think he was sold on it until he saw the animation for it. And then he really kind of came around with the music and it was like, then he was kind of cool with it. But, um, but yeah, I think it was just kind of adding a character that was pretty vulnerable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the, that was the whole cue of, of just getting a character that you see a glimpse of someone that has just kind of, you know, failed and, yeah. Well, it's just kind of it, it kind of felt a uh a semi amalgamation of the the feelings of our of our team squad you know they've they've had a lot of just punches in the face uh, yeah yeah but sure. uh but yeah and uh wrap this episode with the discovery of our infinite earths with infinite titans and uh Quinn's kind of leadership and determination that it's it's time to run did you want to uh I know people definitely listen around or along for uh lingering thoughts after this episode we talked a little bit about it but do you want to talk a little bit about the change from the uh uh kevin net over to finding the the bridge yeah sure you know it you know it was like i had always kind of thought about this thing of you know i actually in my eyes you know didn't want to leave that kevin net on such an anticlimactic you know like you didn't really get to see it do its thing, you know? Yeah. And there is something really interesting and cool of getting to kind of finally see that, you know, in the, in the other version at the end of the finale, you know? Yeah. And I mean, it was nuts, man. <laughs> it was nuts, <laughs> man. And we could talk about it in 313. Okay. That's the one that got the most adjust. Yeah. All, yeah. all that really happened in this one was that they, instead of like it, pinging that you know hey we we found the hyper transmissional bridge it was like hey we got we, we got to turn the cabinet back on and in 12 they go to the, actually to the you know shattered pieces of the cabinet to reactivate the thing and you know you get this really cool moment where in the 313 they go and they activate the bridge and blah 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 so everything kind of still worked um and another reason that it kind of like it may have you know actually been better not to go that way. I think there were story points that were better in the previous version. And then there's some that are actually better in the, in the current version, because it was like, there was a lot of story points going on at the same time. And if that episode was like 30 minutes, it would have been bonkers. It would have been awesome, you know, but it just like, couldn't, it couldn't, we couldn't do it. You know, and that's, that's the reality of it is that you realize that sometimes that the writing that you're doing um, doesn't mean that's going to make the the final thing. And you got to kind of really in, in a very short amount of time to keep production on track, come up with a story and alter it and fix it and make it make sense and continue going forward. And now here's the thing. We didn't have to just fix one. We had to fix two, three, three episodes in yeah. a day. Yeah. Because if we didn't, because the problem was we were already in boards we were boarding, we already had boards on 313. Yeah. And so when we got the news that Jambo was like, we cannot do this, like this, we're, we're maxed. 
Yeah. Like this is, this is nuts. Like, and they even acknowledge like that's when, that's when you know, like you've pushed your budget to the actual, <laughs> like sometimes they we say, man, do I don't know how we're going to do this, but we'll try. But when you finally, it's like, we can't do it. Yeah. And you're like, okay, we have to, we have to, and, and, out. and no, friggin' good luck trying to get money from the network. I mean, yeah. we, we, yeah. I mean, and, and, and I talk about this in lingering the, with the, with June that man, we could not get, extra money (laughs) it's like but but i've seen so many productions dude just kind of go so stupidly over budget it's nuts and we've always been on budget yeah always yeah but we couldn't do for the life of us you cannot get extra money i don't know why it was like that maybe it was just to keep it cheap i don't know i mean you want to stay on budget you know that's the goal that's the dream (laughs) but sometimes they're like dude if if we just had if we just had a little bit extra, yeah. just a little bit extra, yeah, we could have made a bonkers finale. <laughs> like it would have been nuts. Yeah. And you know, that's you, you try. You know, you, you we did the ask. We asked. It yeah. was no. And uh, I really don't think in the in the history of the show. In fact, you know, season two. I remember. You know. I think we asked for a little extra. I think they ended up giving it to us, but then we just gave it back because at the end of the season, we didn't really need it, you know? Yeah. It would be nice if we just like, hey, give us that stuff for that. Let me go, <laughs> go do this Stick thing. Stick in the back know? pocket for later. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that sucks. You, yeah. you know, you, you hope and you hope and you hope that one time that, you know, you ask for that little extra, you know, money to kind of go that extra mile um it just it wasn't coming and, and you know what to to give tbs a little bit of credit here um that was a weird time for yeah. for everybody there were shows getting canceled left and right dude right. i'm talking about i've never seen more shows canceled and this is and and as you're dealing with all of this there's like you know, you're, you're, you're doing art, you're making an animated show and around you there's riots, there's, there's cars burning, there's, you know, a pandemic going on, there's an election, you got, you're trying to ask for more money, shows are getting canceled left and right. People's friends on other shows don't have jobs anymore. Right. And your job is to like, okay, I have to rewrite this in a day, because if I don't, these people could be out of a job if they decide at any moment to cancel this show sure. during production, which can, they do, they do <laughs> do that. Like, and you see that, yeah. you know, in, in look back on 2020, how many shows got canned because of how much budget, like how much it was to make that show. Right. That's a really like crazy thing to keep in the back of your head while you're working on a show. And it's not, the easiest thing to overcome mentally. And the thing is you have people that are going through their own kind of like personal, you know, traumas and and emotional stuff where people are like, I remember our director, his dad died in the middle of directing 311. Yeah. His dad passed away and he, he was in Mexico. And it was like, how do you get to your dad during a pandemic? Yeah. And he had to finish, he, like he had to like basically do this episode because it, it was like he was right at the end of his job. And he knew, he even, Juan knew, which is, Juan, can I just say how incredible Juan is? Juan is like, he came into Final Space and like really adopted this show. And like every episode he did, I love, I like, I love, like loved it, you know? Like <laughs> he found this really cool tone. Every episode, he just really, he really did some cool stuff and he was always had a great personality, always positive, always coming into a meeting, cracking jokes and stuff. And when you find that out, you're like, man, holy crap. Like, I just want him to go see his dad, you know, like kind of go to the figure out how to get his dad, you know, funeral, you know, like what, what, what do we do? Go do it. You don't have to stay here, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, I, I, I can't even remember what actually ended up happening. I, I don't even know if he got to go there um, because of the pandemic. So that's like, you're dealing with all these kind of like very tragic things around you. And I think at this time, you know, our supervisor director got in a, in a car crash 
<laughs> like it was, yeah. I think, yeah, he was driving late at night and this guy was getting chased by the LAPD, hits his car at 90 miles per hour. He breaks, he breaks a bunch of bones and then he comes into work the next day. <laughs> Gosh. And it's like, dude, like we, we told him like, dude, we're good. But he was like, <laughs> Take he was like, no, but he's the kind of guy. And this is the kind of, you know, people that we had on the show that if he's doing nothing, like he, that's almost worse for him. Yeah. Into, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he has to feel like he's doing something and I'm the same way. Like if I got in a car wreck, I'd be like, dude, I'm, I'm on the call in the morning. You know, like I can't mentally, like if, if you're just kind of sitting there alone in a bed, that's worse yeah, yeah. <laughs> like for you mentally. Yeah, so you yeah. had all these like crazy things happening and you're having to rewrite the story and you're having to do, you know, post and all this stuff. And it's like, it's just this 311, 312, 313 was like a really challenging time. Yeah. Um, it was really difficult. Yeah. And I think, you know, for the episode that came out of it, I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah. You know, it was, a, I think it's a solid episode and Absolutely. you get a lot of story, cool story points and um, they just crushed it. Everybody kind of really came together on this one and was able to kind of take what could have been a very big, like, Oh no, what do we do into, okay, let's figure it out. And that's what you kind of have to do on the fly sometimes. And I think with this one, we were able to kind of take it to a point of ultimate disaster until like, okay, let's, how do we, how do we fix it? If we do this and this, this, that, this, this, it will work. And they were like, okay, let's go. Cause they have to start boarding. They have to reboard stuff. Yeah. And it's not just that you have to kind of like, every, we had three boarding teams waiting for us that basically were waiting on a draft. And so you have this one draft, and then you have to go to the next to connect the story points to, to what they're already reboarding. And then you have to go to the next. It's like, it's a, it was nuts, man. That was a crazy time. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it came out excellent. Uh, I think a lot of people really liked this episode and it was a massive episode. Um, and yeah, so uh, big episode of the podcast and only the first of three specials uh coming out one after the other we're doing special release on this one so this should be fun uh we have 12 just around the corner it's going to be coming out this friday at a special premiere time of 9 a.m pacific 12 p.m eastern on the into phone space youtube and then coming out on your podcast locations right after the premiere uh and finally the big one the season finale will hit youtube and maybe some other locations we'll see if i'm a stream to twitch or something like that uh the typical final space saturday premiere time of, of last season of uh 10 30 p.m eastern uh so it's 7 30 p uh pacific uh so a lot of really cool episodes coming out this week all paired with new into finals lingering thoughts sections that you should definitely tune into because these fans have some really awesome and intense questions for Owen. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, speaking of, uh, stay on for just a bit more after this episode because Linger is coming right after this. Uh, and this is a reminder, as always, to follow at Owen Rogers and at Gabriel W. Jones on Instagram and Twitter, as well as at Final Space and at NC Final Space for info coming up. Uh, make sure you follow the show wherever you podcast, subscribe, like, and comment uh, on YouTube, and give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that's it for me and Owen on this one. Stay tuned for our first NC Final Lingering Thoughts and about five-ish seconds and we'll see you next time on into final space thanks guys thanks for holding on and tuning in to our very first into final lingering thoughts we had fans enter online and randomly selected to join uh this episode so we picked three of those fans randomly and uh they're going to get to ask any lingering thoughts to the man himself olin rogers uh, we have with us today our very first special fan june uh please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you love final space hi there i'm june thank you so much for having me today uh i guess what I love about Final Space so much is that there is just there's a little bit of everything for everyone. If you want a a, a funny show, you got a funny show. If you want a tearjerker, you got the tearjerker. There's just a little bit of everything, and I I just I just think that's great. Yeah, well, we're very right. excited. Yeah, that's a great response. Great an answer. answer. <laughs> you crushed. <it. laughs> Yeah, uh, and you have some really great questions to come our way. So uh, let's get into those and uh, you can just ask away. All right, then. Okay, first question. Episode 11 is one that is both funny and emotional. How do you go about balancing the humor and seriousness in the show overall? Yeah, you know, that's like the 
probably the hardest thing to do with, you know, any kind of show that, that balances a lot of different tones, you know? And I think with, you know, final space, that's definitely one of the the hardest things that we kind of try to do uh, throughout. And, you know, each, whether or not we succeed or fail, it's, it's definitely something that, uh, you know, some, some episodes do it better. Some, some don't do it better, you know? It's, it's, so I think this episode, I felt like did it really well. It was a nice balance um, you got some fun, you got some, you know, the dramatic, you got the emotional out of it. And it's really kind of, at least how I approach it is you got to let those moments kind of live on their own. And sometimes you can undercut a very dramatic moment with a comedy beat and some people appreciate it. Some people don't, you know? Um, so there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but I don't think I have the, the, the right answer for that. You know, like <laughs> it's something that I'm still trying to, you know, figure out on my own. And, you know, I've, I've been experiment, experimenting it uh, on that idea and that kind of tone, even on my YouTube days, you know, like if you look a lot of at my uh, web series, you'll see that I'm, I'm trying to balance like really funny moments in a very, an emotional scene because I always love to, uh, I always love to have a character that you can like cry and laugh with because then you really get to know them. You know, yeah. like if those are like two emotions that you kind of do with your friends, you know, if you've ever had a best friend, you've definitely cried with them at some point and you've definitely have laughed with them. You've, you've, you experience a broad band of emotions. And I think that's the, um, the surprising thing, you know, about kind of balancing these tones. And I think this episode, there's a lot of really kind of, there's one moment in particular that, that I'm like, you know, you have this very intense scene where these, you know, Invictus zombie kind of Gary's are attacking and it's pretty dramatic throughout the entire episode. And then you get onto the bridge and you see biscuit shooting cookies, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> it's a spliced in there so earnestly that you're not kind of questioning <laughs> like yeah. how ridiculousness it, it is, but you're just kind of like, wow, that was like, it was a cool, funny moment, but I'm still in the scene. You know what I mean? Um, so there's something like that. I th it's it's definitely a, um, a very hard kind of mixture to to get just right. You know, it's like a perfect formula, and uh, sometimes it can come out too sweet or too bitter. But uh, whenever you get it just right, it's it's a pretty pretty awesome thing. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah. June. Your next question. Yep. All right. Question two. What was the most difficult scene to write in season three? Oh, difficult scene to write. Um, there's always so many because it's 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 just such a, uh, a a balance of different uh, different scenes and stuff like that. But I would probably have to say, like, just going into um I'll go, I'll say this, that the, probably the hardest thing, the hardest scene. And I'll, and I'll say, I'll say the hardest scene. And then the actual hardest thing because of a certain, you know, the, the, the situation behind it. So the hardest scene for me at the time was episode eight, uh, the fight with avocado and Gary, because it was, it was me kind of really battling uh, a lot of stuff personally. And I was like, I didn't really know, at the time with the pandemic, it was like, you know, I was sitting alone by myself for so long in a room in a tiny little office, my, my little personal office, you know, <laughs> and you don't really kind of get to talk to anybody, you know, like we, it was just such a weird time that I started to kind of like, you know, go into myself. And I saw that there was a lot of like, you know, traumatic things that I have not addressed because I was so focused on like just going forward and pushing forward and all these different things that I was doing doing that when I, when I started to do that, I was like, Oh man, I'm opening up some stuff that I did not expect to open up. And it wasn't like I attempted to or tried to do it. Um, so I had to figure out what to do with it. I could have sat there and just kind of like really crumbled. Um, but I was like, you know what, I, I got to channel this in a, in a way. And I just kind of channeled it into that scene because that's the, that's the only place I could put it. <laughs> and it was like a very raw emotional experience experience. And at the end of it, you know, I came out, you know, a lot better, but it was still kind of very raw that like a lot of the feelings and emotions I was feeling. And, and at the time, even Cote, you know, he was going through a lot of different stuff too. 
And for some reason, that scene hit him in a way that I wasn't expecting. And it just kind of kept this like, you know, it's that that whole scene was just such a uh, an emotional time because everybody was kind of like on the verge of breaking down, like in, even in the production, you had storyboarders that just like they were so used to sitting next to somebody and talking to somebody. And now they didn't really have that. So there was like Rosa just staying on Zoom calls with them as they were just drawing just so they could have somebody to talk to. And it's like right around episode eight. I just remember everything being like, holy crap, how are we going to finish this? Um, and that was a really tough, tough scene. But I would say now the, there's the other side of it where emotionally that was the most difficult. The other side of it is production wise, what was the most difficult. And it really was the last three episodes. And the reason why is because on after episode 10, they were like, we cannot, like, they don't know more money. They could not actually make the, the episodes that we had written for 11, 12, and 13. And the crazy thing is we had storyline. Look at the episodes. We were able to do it so quickly and, I think it massaged it in a way that you were like, okay, that works, you know, but essentially it wasn't supposed to be uh, in episode 11. I think there was like, there was a moment where um, they weren't going to go find the hyper transdimensional bit, uh, uh, hyper transdimensional bridge. They were actually going to try to find the Kevin net. See in the end of 10, the Kevin net, didn't really get destroyed and get, you know, it got disabled. And so at the end of 11, they were like, we got to find this Kevin net. We got to activate it. And so in 12, when they arrive at the, um, essentially the, the hyper transdimensional bridge, that was actually supposed to be the Kevin net. And so we had to rewrite this, like close off story points, um, basically starting in 10 going to 11 and then 12 had a massive rewrite and 13 was completely different. Um, and so all these, like we had a, like in 13, they activate the Kevin net Titans are running. It's lasering them to bits. It's like, it's, it was nuts. And in this, we were like, okay, how do we do this on the fly? Because if we don't, we literally won't complete this. And so that's kind of like a moment where, you know, typically everybody at that time in the pandemic was, and sorry for the long winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> there's there, there uh, in the pandemic they were kind of um you know a lot of studios were, were basically asking for more money to get through the pandemic but man we, we couldn't it was like we couldn't get anything so we just had to basically rewrite it on the fly and you know close off story points and um basically try to make sense of something within a day we had to rewrite all those episodes within a day. Wow. And so that was kind of really hard because you, you start, and one of the suckiest things to do as a writer is when you really love something that you've been building up the entire season to, like I had an ending for season three that I had actually written before we even started script writing. Cause I knew our, where I wanted to end it. And I had to kind of let that go because there was no way we could get to that point. And so that was a sad thing of like having to just like, it's like, okay, how do we just make an episode that works? And a lot of that comes down to animation friendly animation, you know, like what's, what's economy wise, like what can we do? And I was always surprised by this because every time you, like you think like, Hey, that's very animation friendly. It wasn't, you know, and it was like, well, what is animation friendly? And there was times where it's like, you know, the Titans obviously are big animation hogs. Like they will, they cost so much to do them. Another thing, Gary zombies, they're just, it's a lot of them. There's a lot of animation with each of them. You gotta, you gotta kind of wrap that up. And so we like in the finale, dude, they were getting like Gary and Avocado were getting like attacked by all these kind of Gary zombies. And they were like pinned down and, um, they were like, dude, there's no way. What do we, we can't make us like a movie out of this thing. And so we had to kind of get rid of them, you know? And it was like, it, it sucks when you have to do those tiny little things, but, um, but yeah, I think what came out was, was, was good. You know, it's, it's, it's the best we could have done in this situation. And, you know, you can't plan for it. You don't expect it. You don't, you don't want to get that call from the animation studio and saying, yo, they can't do it. 
there's no, there's literally nothing they can do. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the times like, man, I, I hear, I, I hear this all the time and just know that final space has almost never been over budget. Never. There's, I think there's only one time where we ask for an extra week and there's, and I hear it's instances with like Netflix where people are like freaking 18 months behind schedule on, on a season. And they're just getting in and people are getting paid quadruple overtime because they're so behind schedule. And it's like, we, like, we couldn't get anything. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. like we were like, what is this? Like everybody gets, you know, basically, um, you know, extra money to, to do their vision. And it was like, it was literally like kind of having your hands handcuffed and you're kind of like thrown into a water tank and you're like, okay, now write an episode. And it's like, you, you basically are confined to the budget that you're in. But at the same time, when you get to the point where you're like, this is the thing I wrote, guess what? <laughs> it's like, you have to like figure out how to make the puzzle make sense in a yeah, very yeah. short amount of time. So those, that's probably like the emotional side. What was most difficult was episode eight. I just, I remember that vividly. And then for the production side, it was the last three episodes. It was, it was so challenging to kind of wrap up storylines. And you, it, the, <laughs> the crazy thing is like, it kind of worked, you know, like we were able to, in episode 11, just like re, we rewrote the ending. So when Quinn is like, hey, you know, and it kind of worked for her story. Like she came around to the point of um, saying, you know what, it, it's not worth trying to defeat these Titans. Let's focus on trying to stay alive. And I, and I actually liked that better um, so that she goes off and tries to find the hyper transdimensional bridge instead of the Kevin net still trying to activate the Kevin net. You know, it's yeah. like, it just felt like, that people would have not liked Quinn for like constantly <laughs> trying to find this Kevin net. Like, who cares about the Kevin net? Keep these guys alive. So it kind of really, I think, helped Quinn's story in that point. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it. And the funny thing is, when you look at twelve and they go up to that hyper transmitial bridge, if you can imagine the Kevin net, the buoy systems were supposed to be connected to the Kevin net. So it's like it would have made a bigger story point for. Uh, I think Gary, that he was kind of, you know, actually working on the thing that activated the Kevin net. Cause that would have been, I think a funnier thing that the thing that he's been working five years in his prison sentence was a, a prototype for yeah. the thing that he hated the most, you know, <laughs> you know, like, so it was, there was kind of like stuff like that, but you know, it's, it is what it is, but I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, your last question, Chief. All right, then. Um, sort of a happier question, hopefully. <laughs> but um, question three. What do you consider to be the biggest victory of the show, either in-universe or outside the show? Yeah, that's like, that's a really good question. You know, I think the best that you could hope for with any kind of show is that it just connects with somebody. And in a meaningful way. You know, you can like it, you can dislike it, you can do whatever it is. But if if it connected with somebody at, at one point in time, then the show did something, you know, that that I think that we were trying to do, which was have you connect with these characters in a really meaningful way and have, you know, sometimes shows hit people at the right time um, where they're going through their own personal experiences and the show can kind of help them. Like, I, I still remember this one moment where, um, a fan was kind of going through like a really tough time with her dad and the show helped her reconnect with her dad. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like that's, you don't expect a TV show to do that, let alone an animation on TBS, you know, <laughs> like what, what is that? Um, but I think that's a really meaningful thing when somebody can look at the show and, and, you know, if there's a moment in there that like that, that helped me at, at a certain time, I think that's, that's really meaningful. I think that's probably the best victory. I think that if it's in show, I think it's just that we were trying to push the limits, you know, at the time in 2016, there weren't a lot of shows that were trying to do the things that we were doing, you know, and to try to make a really pretty show and whether or not the character animation or whatever the, if people, there's one thing they don't like about it, but if you look at the, the progress from season one to season two and how it looks and how it like the music and it, it like, it, it just feels like 
it was like <laughs> at the time, like 2016, it was American Dad. It was Family Guy. That was adult animation when we pitched Final Space. Now it's a completely different landscape. You know, there's some people doing amazing things in animation and that's incredible, you know, and I don't think Final Space had any effect on that, but it just kind of shows you that animation is changing in such a meaningful way. And who knows what it looks like five years from now, you know, like that's the cool thing, I think, in production that we were at, at, in 2016 when backgrounds were kind of very simple. We were pushing the limits of backgrounds to where they're like, dude, we this isn't normal. Like I kept hearing that every step of the way during season one, like this isn't normal to the point where it got to season three, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's normal. You see what I mean? <laughs> like we were at the time, like I think in production, we were trying to do really cool things and I think people saw it, you know? And, and I think there's definitely people that appreciate kind of how that show looks and that's all the artists. They make that thing look so good and they put the extra time to make the acting amazing. You got the background artist, got the character designers, got the art director. Like it's everything is just like there was a lot of passionate people that were like, we want to make a really cool thing. And I think that's, you know, another thing that I say, it's, it's definitely a victory. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's going to wrap our lingering thoughts for this segment. Thank you, June, for your amazing questions. Yeah. And uh, thank you for being a fan of the podcast and the show and for coming on to Into Final Lingering Thoughts. And thank you for tuning in after this episode to listen in. And we'll see you next time, uh, Fantrexians. Bye. <laughs>